Hello everybody, this is Gregory with 5-Minute Catholic Apologetics, where 5 minutes of your time may get you to the divine. Today we're going to talk about the problem that young traditional Catholics have in finding a suitable spouse. Now before we begin, let's start with a prayer. Nomina Patris et Filii et Spiritui Sancti. Amen. Gloria et Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto. Sucutera in principio et nuc et semper et de seculae seculor. Amen. couple things. Uh, this is the last episode you're going to see recorded in this house. I am moving tomorrow, so future episodes will be at a different place. Second, check out the Catholic dating playlist that we have. There's probably about 25 episodes, and a lot of them have to do with Catholic dating and some of the struggles with it and some advice that I give. Now, this episode was inspired by a subscriber who posted a comment uh, about how she's having problems finding traditional Catholic men. So I thought it'd be good to do an episode on this because some of you know my past and kind of know that this uh, intersexual dynamics is something that I, I find quite interesting. And I would say that there's three, there's three reasons as to why traditional Catholic girls, and so we're talking about high school, college age, mid-20s, let's say, are having problems finding traditional Catholic men. Now, one, I think... The MGTOW movement has something to do with it. Now, we have an episode here on how the Men Going Their Way movement has affected Catholic dating, and it's affected dating regardless of what religion you are, and certainly the atheists and the secularists are doing it. And it's a growing phenomenon. If you're not familiar with it, it's essentially men opting out of marriage because they realize the inherent perils and snares that are involved in 21st century matrimony per the court system and per no-fault divorce. So you see a lot of sad stories. Now, maybe some of you women don't think it's sad, but a lot of stories of men who lose all their money, lose their children, and uh, have to pay child support and alimony on a decision they didn't make. Remember that. 70% of the time, women initiate divorce in a marriage, and it's 90% if they're college educated. So a lot of men are realizing, yeah, uh, marriage might not be the best for me, especially since women are putting out the easiest they've ever done in human history. So you know, why buy the cow, get the milk for free kind of thing. So there are some young men who have seen their fathers or uncles or people in their life lose everything. And they're like, yeah, I'm opting out. I think there's a certain element of truth to that. I think this generation also has been raised in this Tinder world, this pump and dub pickup artist world that kind of sees uh, women as disposable objects and to objectify them. And so, and we'll talk about what, what the number three thing is, which is connected to this. And I think that has to do with it as well. I think a corollary to this is historically women have held more to religious values than men. Men, if you if you think of like old movies and so forth of, of you know centuries past, they're always kind of the cad, the wild stallion who doesn't want to be domesticated and they meet the the man meets the virtuous virgin who domesticates them and brings them in to marriage. And understand, I mean historically marriage is never that palatable to man. And this is best evidenced by the dowry. If men were rushing to marriage, there wouldn't need to be a need to have a dowry where it's essentially, I'm sweetening the pot for you to marry my wife. Now, I understand a lot of that had to do with finances and legal obligations and, and, and incentives to marry. And back in the day, I would say, of course, almost all men married because that was really the only way they could get sex and to have social standing and, of course, to have, to have children. They would only go to the brothels or whatever, the strumpets, uh, you know, to, to sow their wild oats, but they would never marry any of those people. But I think that's one thing is it's like, like you don't find, if you go to a trad cath church as a whole, you're going to find more trad cath young women in high school, college age, virgins, and just espousing traditional Catholic beliefs more than you're going to find the guys. And that's just part, of, I think guys get sucked more in to the secularist world that there is so I th- and i think that's always been the, the case number two is i think children of divorce I, I i would tell you this plays a large role that boys sons of single moms have problems with relating to the opposite sex and some of this has to do with abandonment issues and that when the son of a single mom is growing up let's say he's three four five years old and there's not a father around he is worried that his mother's going to leave him because, you know, regardless of what the woman is saying, if she's doing pre- pre- practicing parental alienation or, or let's say the dad died or, you know, or, went, or actually was a deadbeat dad and left, it doesn't really matter. The child thinks, oh my God, my daddy's not here, I only have one parent left. And so I have to placate my mom 
because if she gets mad at me, she might leave me and I'll be all by myself and you know be an orphan on the streets. So there is this kind of like placating of the mom. And as the, the son enters into adolescence, I think this kind of turns into this kind of deification and pedestalization of all women. And I think that leads to nice guy syndrome, people pleaser problems, the, the incel simps as we would call them. And I think you compound that with lack of strong male role models Whatever reason, you know, the, the, the MGTOW men will say it's because the, these, these crazy cluster B personality women have pushed all the men away and they don't want the men in the life. Others would say it's welfare. You see all these you know, proliferation of welfare queens and so forth who <clears throat> don't need a father, don't want a father because they can make more money not having actually marrying the father. Regardless of what it is, you have these boys who don't have strong male role models and have this kind of almost disordered relationship with their mom and therefore as they go through puberty with the opposite sex. So I think there are boys who are very awkward with, 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 uh, with, with teenage girls and college girls. They're just socially not skilled, either because they didn't have a father or their, their parents were dysfunctional or they just never had luck with girls. They're the type like, I'll do your homework, not understand the girls just using them. And, they don't understand that the concept of being a human tampon or an orbiter and all these things that you hear about in the manosphere. So I think that has to do with it. And I think the third thing, which is probably the biggest thing that no one wants to talk about is, we won't say the word because YouTube's got things, the PORN. PORN is a major reason. And look, there are, <laughs> I guess you could say benefits, ancillary benefits to it, in that teen pregnancy rates have dropped quite a bit in the last 20 years compared to its peak. And we would, we would all applaud that. Now, some of that, of course, is abortion. A lot of that's contraception. But a lot of it is, too, that boys get hooked on PRN. I've seen studies that say the first time, that the average age that they're exposed to the first time is age eight. So again, filters, 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 if you're gonna even let them on the tablet. I would probably tell you, don't even ever have them on the tablet or on the computer. Because boys are like men. Once that stuff's there, it's seared into their head. And then they have a disordered relationship with women. And I don't know how many women we know marry a PRN addict who don't even know and it just sabotages the relationship. And I mean, we don't have time to really talk about what that does in a marriage. But a lot of teenage, tween, tween boys, teenage boys, college age boys are raised on this stuff and they think it's normal. They watch enough Judd Apatow movies like 40 Old Virgin and Knocked Up and, and all these movies where PRN is normalized the secular world, of course, will tell you that it's normalized. If you look at the stats, something like PRN Hub is one of the most traveled sites. You look, it's billions of dollars of industry that are made on PRN. And so you see these teenage boys who, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. They're like, they're scared of girls because they didn't have a normal psychosexual development, lots of times because they didn't have a father in their life. Or maybe they just weren't blessed with good physiognomy and good social skills or whatever it is. And so they, 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 they are attracted to girls, but then you have this thing that is just so readily available on your phone at home, and you can just get sucked into that world. And so you'll hear girls lament, boys don't want to ask me out. The boys are scared to ask me out. And I think it's a combination of, there's a lot of boys with poor social skills and just the PRN of it all. Boys don't really have as much of a need to go seek out the physical. And I'm not talking about fornicating. We have an episode, five scriptural examples where fornication is wrong. I'm talking about just, they don't feel the need to actually interact with a live human girl. You see this with web, the webcam industry with older men, but there's not as much of a need. You can even see it with the whole texting world. Like the younger generations are totally fine texting and a phone call scares them. Or they can be texting with someone right across the table from. So I think there's this lack of physical intimacy that a lot of boys are afraid of or not comfortable with. So all these things, and there's other factors, but I think to, the, to, to me, these are like the three or four most salient points, lead to this kind of dearth of quality men, young men, for these girls to date. And I would be very clear with you girls and boys, <laughs> don't marry an addict. Don't marry an addict. And I know some of you, you know, recovering ones would be offended, but if someone's got a drug habit, alcohol, PRN, those big ones, gambling, I would probably throw in there, is even though they've been clean, let's say for six months to a year, normally with those things, they're gonna lapse and then you're gonna be sucked into it. And if you have any children, they're gonna be sucked into it too. And it's just not worth it. These addictions are 
highly problematic and you need to vet any person that you are going to marry because if they have these underlying problems, it will destroy your marriage. So girls, I would tell you, and I would sympathize with you, there are not a lot of quality uh, men out there. And I, I would tell you the other problem, and this goes back to kind of the deification of women and the incel kind of movement within the, the, the younger, is like there's not a lot of overtly masculine teenage boys out there. And you could say that about college age too. You know, this is three generations of being raised by Ray Romano and Homer Simpson and these horrible, feminine, henpecked male role models. So women, of course, and we've talked about this in other episodes in this playlist, are attracted to masculine men, just like men are attracted to very feminine women. And so you kind of see all these factors lining up for the trad Catholic woman who wants to marry a good, strong, young, ambitious Catholic man. But there aren't a lot. Or if there are, she's going to have to settle or maybe even swallow her pride and pick somebody who's got glaring red flags of addiction or lack of confidence. Now, all these things can be remedied from the male point of view. So if you're getting all offended, well, Gregory, you're putting us down. I'm just telling you the truth. You know deep down women are not attracted to a feminine man. And I would tell you, men, I wouldn't marry. I would tell you not to marry a raging female alcoholic. So it goes both ways. So we all have kind of intergenerational baggage that we inherit from our parents and we inherit from our childhood. The key is to do the deep work and to purge ourselves of these impediments because they will wreak havoc in a marriage. And this is one of the thousands of contributive factors to the divorce issue, and especially even in the Catholic world. Uh, it's because these things are not addressed. You need to address them immediately. Guys, please post in the comments. I'd love to hear from you, women or men. What do you think is the, the problem? If you think that PRN, PRN is not a problem with uh, the younger generation, please post. I'd love to hear all your comments. Please hit the notification, subscribe, and share button, share with like-minded people. Until next time, take care, God bless, and pray.